In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters, today's Mass is a votive Mass in honour of Saint Philomena, Virgin and Martyr. Some years ago, we received the grace to be able to celebrate a votive Mass in her honour. And the 11th of August is her feast day. So through this votive Mass, we unite ourselves to all those around the world who celebrate um, Saint Philomena's feast day with all the devotees of Saint Philomena. Philomena, which means daughter of light. She was removed from the liturgical calendar in 1961. She was not the only one that this happened to. She was not the only saint who was removed from the universal calendar. Other saints such as Saint George um, were removed. And this was not because they don't exist. Um, so, you can still invoke St. Philomena. Um, I mention this because some have said this is because um, St. Philomena doesn't exist. It caused confusion when um, she was removed from the universal calendar. Paul VI was asked um, for clarification after this happened, and he said the faithful can still invoke uh, St. Philomena. The cult still exists. Um, so, please be aware of this. Um, Saint Padre Pio of Pietrucina, who was devoted to Saint Philomena, was very displeased with the decision. Saint Padre Pio, who could penetrate and see deeper into things, said, the confusion over Saint Philomena comes from Satan. That's what Saint Padre Pio said. So imagine, you went from people having devotion to Saint Philomena to people doubting whether she existed. There's this confusion. You find people ask, Did, does she exist or wasn't she removed? So um, you even have people um, who call into question everything that was done by several popes um, in her regard before she was removed from the calendar. And they would even call into question the holy Cure of ours, Saint John Marie Vianney, who prayed to Saint Philomena, who saw Saint Philomena. Saint Philomena would appear to him. And he said that she interceded for him and worked miracles for him in his parish. So, who else could it have been? It's as if, if you doubt her existence, it's as if you're saying, well, he was praying to some some full saint or he was praying. It's as if you're saying he was praying to some demon or something. So you would be calling into question the life of Saint John Vianney and all those other saints who were devoted to Saint Philomena, such as Pope Saint Pius X and Blessed Pius IX and we've just mentioned Padre Pio and a list of other saints as well. And you would call into question the constant decision of the church. So dear brothers and sisters, do not become yourselves an instrument of the evil one by telling people Saint Philomena doesn't exist. You know, there is a tendency which developed in the last century to call into question something that the church had approved and then to say it was wrong to have approved it or to say, now we have better knowledge, we have better understanding. Um, that is what the modernists do. There is a heresy called modernism, and that's what they did with sacred scripture. Um, they changed the truth by saying, now we have better knowledge, now we understand things better, so we have to change the faith, we have to change what we believe. So they did this with sacred scripture, but this method of theirs can be applied to everything apply to the teaching of the church and its doctrine, and even to spirituality, which may be expressed in um, a religious congregation's charism. And then they try to demonize the traditional Latin mass. Has something similar happened to Saint Philomena? 
you can judge for yourselves. When those who attack her say, well, we don't care how many popes approved her, we don't care that she was canonized, we don't care um, what took place before us, and we don't care that the popes were aware of the little information that we have on her life and they still approved her. We know better now and what took place before us was wrong and we are right. This is um, the method that they use. They consider everything that was approved in the past to be abrogated, nullified and void. So dear brothers and sisters, do your part to correct those who um, are confused and those who uh, have doubts to say the church never said um, Saint Philomena doesn't exist, never said that she's no longer a saint, and never said the faithful can't invoke her and pray to her. I say this because you meet some people who say, oh, can we still pray to Saint Philomena? The confusion over Saint Philomena comes from Satan, Saint Padre Pio said. Some things are reserved for latter times. The treatise on true devotion to Mary by St. Louis de Montfort was hidden and found in later times. Venerable Mother Mariana, the Franciscan conceptionist nun, was told that the devotion to Our Lady of Good Success will be unknown until these times, as well as the life of Venerable Mother Mariana. We can also add that St. Veronica Giuliani, who is still largely unknown, has been reserved for these times. The tomb of Saint Philomena was only discovered in the 19th century. Perhaps God foresaw that in these times there'd be very little devotion to the virgin martyrs, like there used to be in the church to Saint, like Saint Agnes or Saint Agatha and so on. So perhaps God foresaw that in these times there'd be little devotion to these virgin martyrs and that the virtue of chastity and purity would come under ferocious attack. Well, we have a virgin martyr, Saint Philomena, who is being invoked in these times by both young and old, and she is working incredible miracles. How many Catholic homes around the world have within it a statue of Saint Philomena? How many souls have experienced a powerful and miraculous intercession of Saint Philomena? She is truly a miracle worker. She's amazing, Saint Philomena. It's as if anything you ask of her, she'll grant it to you. No wonder the Curie of ours entrusted people to her as well as himself to Saint Philomena. Saint Philomena speaks with her actions. And it's no wonder some have called her the preacher of Christ. She'll even leave you speechless when you see the type of miracles she works. Read the life of Pauline Jaracot and others, and you know that Saint Philomena is truly a special grace that has been given to us in these times. Not only does she give a healing of body, but her miraculous intercession can unblock and deliver us from certain spiritual impediments in our souls. And let us join with those around the world in thanking God for having given us this grace in these times, for giving us this virgin martyr for these times. With people from all over the world, from India to Africa to France, Portugal, Italy, Ireland, the United States, Brazil, St. Lucia, Grenada, the Philippines, all over the world, you find people with the name Philomena and you find the devotees of St. Philomena who testify to her powerful intercession. St. Philomena is the patroness of the living rosary and the children of Mary. And let us spread devotion also to the cord of St. Philomena, the blessing of the court can be found in the Roman ritual. And I'd like to invite those who may be listening to try the devotion to Saint Philomena. You can even pray a novena to Saint Philomena. Ask her 
for whatever you have need of, for the needs of body and soul, material goods and spiritual goods, if you are suffering from interior tribulation, external persecution, or even just to grow in virtue, or to be able to practice a particular virtue, or for perseverance, or to be successful in a particular endeavor, try a novena to Saint Philomena, so long as your request is in accordance with the will of God. And whatever are the chains that tie you up in bondage, she will be like Our Lady, untire of knots, and the powerful hand of Saint Philomena will set you free. Finally, we've mentioned, Saint Philomena is the patroness of the children of Mary. This daughter of Mary is very dear to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and she has a special place in her Immaculate Heart. Our Lady knows the times we are living in. Many souls struggle to be chaste. We are living in the reign of impurity, and young people are bombarded with propaganda and images to make them lose their innocence. We have this precious jewel in Saint Philomena, the daughter of light who is like a star, a guiding star that will lead us up the mountain of God, the blue mountain, if I could call it that, the Marian mountain, which is a spiritual mountain the children of Mary must go up through an ascetical life of mortification and self-denial to continually control and hold back the desires of the flesh and enter into a life of mystical union with Our Lady. And let us pray that a new era of purity can begin, where many, many, many young people will desire to be chaste, renouncing their former ways, and they will unite themselves to Christ crucified, who is, at, who is at the top of this Marian mountain. And through chastity, we will see the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And you'll find the traditional Latin Mass is inspiring many young people to renounce their former ways and to change. And let's pray that in this era of purity, we'll start to see many vocations to the religious life We'll start to see large families again and young married couples. And let us pray to Saint Philomena, the patroness of the living rosary and the children of Mary, to grant us this grace. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.